Good morning, everyone. I'm Vince Lancey, and today's market rundown, we're going to discuss gold's highest daily all-time close, and we're going to take a look at a pivotal silver report from Bank of America. A lot to squeeze in, so I may have to move quickly. First, let's look at the markets. Dollars up two, 10-year yields are down one. S&P 500 is up 14 and 53.57. The VIX is 20.45. Down 27, gold is down 7 bucks, was down around 10, 24.65 after having an all-time high close. Silver, 27.79, down 67 basis points after ripping yesterday. Uh, copper, 404, down 2.5 cents after aiding and abetting silver on the rally yesterday. Uh, crude, chopping around on change, down 8 cents right now, 79.70. Natural gas, 220, down up four and a half five cents. Bitcoin down 530, 5.23 at 58.825, and Ethereum 26.43. Platinum Palladium are mixed. Palladium is 9.20, Platinum is 9.35. Holding the relationship and all the grains are lower. Soybean is the worst of the three. 9.95, 3.82, 5.47. Soybeans, corn and wheat down 17, down three, and down four. Figure it out, because I can't. All right. There's the front page, gold ETF cherry on top, commemorating, acknowledging, noticing that American uh, and European demand is back in investor form. Again, it could be short-lived. This is very Fed-related, I would think, but it nevertheless, it is there. The gold gang uh, gets capped and traded, uh, uh, always sunny in Philadelphia title. Uh, the content is basically that there are buyers out there that are being patient and are depending on someone else to keep a cap on the market while they buy. And there's a, a Rowan Atkinson's, you know, of, of the Mr. Bean fame uh, discussing uh, freedom of speech. Those are all there. Gold rally, China silver, lame title, I know, but let's 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 work on that. First, gold's new all-time high close. Gold's new all-time high close. That's a monthly chart. I'll pop it up there for a second. On a monthly basis, it's pretty obviously bullish, okay? But we're not done the month yet. On a daily basis, it may not seem as obvious. I'll show you what I'm talking about. You're like, okay, that's a good chart, but that's the highest close we've ever had. And the fact that they, and by they, I mean the market, and we know who they can be, but the fact that they are not selling it or don't feel confident selling it and are letting it get into a wick above two wicks this week. I think someone is either low on bullets has a little bit of gunpowder they need to keep in reserve for when the CPI comes out or is just downright scared. Whoever they are, they're short the market and they're having a hard time keeping a cap on it. So, and as a result of that, yesterday I said on uh, Twitter, X, whatever we're calling it, I said that uh, uh, gold should trade 2,500 in spot uh, by the time CPI comes out or I'll eat my toupee. Now, it's because I have real hair. I don't have to eat a toupee. Uh, I do have hats, so I'm not going to eat my hat. You get the idea, right? All right, I think gold's going higher approaching the number because, right? And I don't make predictions because I think this, there's no one out there who wants to sell this market. No one, except longs that are taking profits. So you need to wait for your opportunity to pounce if you want to sell it. Now's not a time to sell it. We'll see. I have a feeling, I have a feeling that, well, If the CPI was going to be higher than expected, this market would be already lower as it would be leaked to big players. But we'll see. All right. Oh, let me bring... Here's the daily, right? What did I draw yesterday? We drew together a trend line, right? I drew it on the... I looked at the daily... I drew on the four hour and then I drew it on the one hour. This trend line is a good trend line. If we go below it, 
you probably don't want to buy that dip, but you want to buy dips approaching it. If you need to move the trend line around, that's fine. Uh, another corroboration of the trend line is when moving averages start to corroborate it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. There, this moving average, it's a 50-hour moving average, is now becoming the trend line. So I think this is going to hold this trend line. It's an hourly trend line going into CPI, and then all bets are off. So you should be long. I should be long, not you. You should do what you want to do. All right, uh, let's get back to the, the Bank of America uh, analysis, which is what I wanted to focus on today. I'm going to have to move quickly through it, but we have the report for premium subscribers at the bottom. I'm going to give you a little taste of it. These are things that I pulled out of it. China wants more silver than they have. And there's a chart to that effect. Silver market is in deficit. Bank of America expects the silver market to remain in deficit with declining inventories, making these deficits more impactful. That's an important statement, okay? Shortfalls are nothing new in silver, yet silver prices have been range-bound between 2020 and 2024, averaging around 23.5 an ounce, owing to the piggybacking the piggy bank being raided by bullion banks using it to satisfy BRICS demand. That's me talking, not the report. So you have a market that's not producing enough to satisfy demand. And you don't have available scrap or easily available scrap or easily available recycled silver, however you want to call it. So you start to draw down on the vaults while you look for scrap. And that gives us this chart. Between here and here is the, the time frame that Bank of America is talking about. Silver dropped. Between here and here, inventory, silver dropped. So once upon a time, they compensated for the shortage in demand, I'm sorry, the shortage in supply, fresh supply, by using the vault. I don't think they're able to do that anymore, especially in London. Because they can't draw down the vaults as much anymore, this will increasingly help make the deficits in supply, fresh supply, more obvious, especially as demand is bouncing back too, which brings us to demand bouncing back. China has shifted to a net importer of silver driven by both increased imports and reduced exports, signaling a rebalanced domestic market. What does that mean? Well, increased imports, they don't have any more. They've already depleted their own concentrate, their own silver concentrate as an offload of zinc. And now they're looking for it elsewhere. Latin America is one of them. So now they're importing. They're reducing exports. Now, the export number doesn't matter as much. The, they export silver to Japan, so Japan can uh, uh, send it back in a different form, uh, powder or paste. So there's a rebalancing of the Chinese domestic market, meaning uh, they don't have as much indigenous supply, so they have to go out for it now. And these charts... Uh, explain that. The concentrate comment I said, silver, China's domestic silver has tended to be oversupplied, partly because its producers churned out silver as a byproduct at its base metal smelters. Now, there's less silver byproduct coming out of smelters. You will hear from many people that that is because there's less smelter activity. That is true. There is also less of it to be had because in the run-up starting in May, China was cannibal. China was going out to its base metal uh, refiners and saying, pull your silver out now. They've already taken that silver. So there is no more due to scouring reported. China, demand ex-China is also rising, okay? Uh, the West 
imports are rising. Japan imports are rising. I think the rest of the world is catching up to what China is doing. Now, that's really not even investment demand yet. All right. Why is this? Well, there's increased silver demand in solar PV. Let's face it. The West has to catch up or China is going to own that market. They believe that there is a goal to silver ratio drop expected 75 or lower. We went down to 75 and went back up to 85, almost 90. Accompanying all this, silver prices on China's domestic market have been trading at a premium to quotations ex-China. Well, what does that mean? The price of silver is higher in China than it is everywhere else in the world despite what you may hear elsewhere. Now, they don't mention, Bank of America does not mention the VAT as the reason for the higher price. Now, either that's because the VAT isn't the reason for the higher price or because their analysis is uh, not thorough. You'll have to find out for yourself. We pretty much know uh, what, what we think it is, but the full analysis and full report are at bottom. It's very thorough. Uh I discussed that a little bit. Oh, the stock is down. The flow must compensate. This had been heavily influenced by healthy inventories, but those inventories are now too low to drain further without replenishing. The silver must now come from elsewhere. All right. So a lot of people look at the vaults. We all, our community looks at the vault, draw down, the vault, draw down. That's a stock trade. As you're pulling silver out of inventory, you're saying, oh, there's demand. They're pulling silver out. Well, they're not pulling it out anymore. Does that mean there's no demand? No, that means they're getting it somewhere else. That means they're they're you know melting down iPhones, whatever. You know they're they're raiding grandma's chandelier, and consequently, that means this is at least in London uh, kind of a bottom. Uh, they don't want it to get any lower than that. You actually probably want to see silver increase because that's silver that's been pulled out of iPhones, and, you know, put into a. Uh, uh, refined form and put into the vault. Anyway, we'll see how that goes. But this increasingly helps make the deficits more obviously, especially as industrial demand is bouncing back to yada, yada. All right. What we want to know now is we're going to pull, be a little bit more of a Columbo. We want to say, okay, the vaults are drawing down or the vaults aren't drawing down anymore. Does that mean silver's not being uh, demanded or the vaults are going up. No, that silver is being demanded. It's just, it's just, it's passing through the vaults now. The above ground deficit in silver supply is being offset by banks going to scrap dealers, by banks going to um, base metals uh, refiners and saying, Give us your silver off uh, your silver byproduct. And that's what's going on. So uh, until production gets caught up, uh, that's what's going to happen. So the vaults are going to be uh, hard to see that way. All right, moving on. Uh, we had some news today, uh, but I, I, I'm running a little bit late. So let's, let's, let's tighten this up. Data on deck this week, CPI, PPI housing starts today is PPI. PPI is a forward-looking with regard to C. It doesn't predict CPI. doesn't predict this CPI. It predicts kind of the next CPI or two CPIs down. So let's see what happens there. There's the uh, Bank of America report. Silver sparkles brighter than gold. And by the way, you know, Bank of America has a, uh, a big short position in silver futures. That's probably because they're long a lot of physical silver, just like Bank of just like JP Morgan is. They're not bearish. They're they're players in the market. All right, I'm Vince. Uh, one more check at the markets. Gold down seven and change. Expect stability with maybe some violent jerks down ten dollars uh, between now and then. The market I'm looking at is the ten year bond. I'm wondering what should happen next. Really, if the Fed eases and that bond doesn't rally, uh, then we've got inflation that's going to come back like overnight. Anyway, I'm Vince. Have a great day.